We're joined now by Labour's Liz Kendall. Welcome to the Sunday Politics. Thanks for having now, me. Labour was pretty widely expected to be wiped out in Scotland, and that's mm -hmm. what happened. But why did it do so badly in England? I think we didn't uh, get people's trust on the economy. We didn't build a broad enough coalition of voters in different parts of the country, and we didn't set out a positive enough alternative for the future. It's not enough to just critique what's going under this government, but actually you've got to set out something that people can believe in that's going to give them hope and confidence in the future. Now, we're at the post-mortem stage, as all parties are, when, uh, as the Tories were after 97, and you are now again. Were any of these reservations, though, expressed behind closed doors uh, when you were developing the election strategy? I mean, I've argued for quite a long while that we've got to set out something positive and not just be the kind of moaning man in the pub. You mentioned that. And what did you mean by that? Well, what I meant was that um, often you get someone who is going on and on and on. Now, they've got a good point at the heart of it, but you just stop listening. What people are more engaged with is someone who can say something positive about what they're actually going to do, not what they don't like. And I've also made the case about changing our public services so that they give people the support that they need in future. But, you know, Ed was the leader and he had total loyalty because we believe in that in the Labour Party and being part of a team. And you need that in the run-up to an you election. Do, and it's a tough, too. It is a tough gig being a leader and he, he deserved our loyalty and support and he got it. Peter Mandelson said this morning it was a mistake for Ed Miliband to ditch the, the new Labour formulae in 2010 that he should have, it needed to be updated, but he should have re revised and reformulated it. Do you agree? I think uh, the words new Labour mean different things to different people. Uh, and I think going back to the past isn't what we need. We're no. going to have to build something genuinely new in future. But if what he meant by that is we've got to uh, keep our working class voters and support, but also reach out to Conservative supporters and Middle England, that's absolutely right. I mean, that's just a fact that that's what you've got to do to win. And I think we lost some of that. You know, I, in speaking to people all over the country, I had lots of people who said who were working on the minimum age a minimum wage, that if they got £8 an hour now, it would be tough, let alone in 2019. So they didn't feel we were doing enough for them. And if you weren't on the minimum wage or a zero hours contract and you owned your own house, people didn't feel like we were saying anything for them. And, and that's what we've got to try and address. You and uh, Alan Johnson have uh, been saying now that Labour ceased to be the party of aspiration. Mm. Uh, but many people will see that as a kind of co coded language for a return to some kind of Blairism, Blairism in a modern I, garb. No, I don't agree with that. Um, the Labour Party has always been about hard work and responsibility, doing well for yourselves and your family. And I don't think that that's a new Labour thing. I think that saying that we want people to be able to build a better life for themselves and their families is what people in my constituency are, are, I represent a diverse but predominantly white working class constituency that's what they want but it's also what where I grew up in Watford you know, wanting to get on in life and build a better life for the future. But he must still have some lessons uh, for you because uh, you, the Labour Party, have not had a convincing now listen to this, not had a convincing electoral victory since 1966, unless mm. it was under Tony Blair. Yeah. I mean, he was a he he won great elections for us and made and both Tony Blair and Gordon Brown made great improvements uh, to this country. But we have to move forward. We are not going to be able to uh, you know fight the battle of the future if we're stuck with the labels of the past. I genuinely think we have to create something new here. Mm. We have got to have an open and honest debate with all parts of the party that we do with dignity and respect, and we have to create something new that is right for 2020. We're going to have to win back 100 seats in 2020. Mm. I think we can do it, but we have to take a long, hard look at ourselves, listen to what people say, and respect all parts of the party as we go forward. How big uh, was the scale of this defeat? Huge. It was huge. And, uh, you know, I was very lucky in Leicester West. We, we fought off a UKIP challenge, and I almost doubled my majority. But I know how tough that fight is, and when... I saw all those seats, Loughborough, Lincoln, Nuneaton, uh, Norwich, where we, where we didn't win. 
uh, and those candidates who slogged their guts out for this party, and, and their voices actually should be the most prominent in this debate. They really should. There's always been left-right divisions in, in the Labour parties, there are in, in, in many parties, but I wonder now if the division in the Labour Party that isn't at least as important is a cultural one. Absolutely. Between those who've done well out of globalisation, mm. who are part of this huge capital city, the most successful city in Europe, and many traditional Labour yeah. voters who feel that they've not done well out of globalisation. absolutely right. The world is moving faster than ever before, and that is creating huge opportunities for some people, but it's leaving far too many behind. And our job is to say to people, you can face the future with confidence and not fear. But that's not by government doing things to people or for them. I think this is the big, the big cultural question we've got. We have remained for too long a party that says, we in Westminster know all the answers, we will tell you the solutions and we'll just deliver it. We are not going to be able to fight the battles of the future if we think we can do it on our own. People have got to play a far bigger role. And if you think about why, why is it that you, will, will, whatever a recession, why will you always do well? Why will you always do well? Because uh, I'm pretty well paid and I live in London. And... Yeah, but you've got a great education. You've got skills, knowledge, contact. You've had choices and chances. Mm. You've been able to put some money aside. So if things go wrong, mm. you'll be able to get yourself back on your feet again. That's what I want for everybody, not just a few people at the top. Be a struggle, I would suggest, to get it all done in one five-year term. In other words, to yes, get yourself ship-shaped by 2020 for victory. It will be um, phenomenally difficult. But I know when I saw those candidates and all our party members, how they gave their hearts and souls to this, I know they want to win again, mm -hmm. and so do we, and we'll be back. Ed Miliband won the leadership thanks to the unions. Peter Mandelson said this morning that the unions could still have an undue influence in choosing his successor. Is that a concern for you? No, actually, I'm a strong supporter of our links with the trade unions, but I think they and we have to change so that we, are, we reach out to more people, that we are not just about those in the public sector but those in the private sector, that we reach out to people who are self-employed or work in small businesses. Okay. And, you know, I want us to go back to our roots here. As a party, we came from ordinary people coming together, helping themselves, you know, helping people to help mm -hmm. themselves and one another too. I actually want us to go back to those roots that we had as a party, because okay. I think that's the best way forward. Just very briefly, I, I want to ask you the, the monumental question of our times. Where's the Edstone? I have no idea, Andrew. <laughs> I really have no idea. <laughs> uh, well, if you see it, will you tell us? Uh, I'll send you a, a picture or a selfie, by it. Okay, I'm in need of a new tabletop, so I thought it would look quite good. I think uh, you might have another choice of a oh, tabletop. Right. Thank you for being there. No doubt we'll get a chance. You are running? Yes. Okay, good. We'll get a chance to interview a lot then between now and the actual vote.